July 9th, 2010. I arrive in Hackensack, New Jersey to chronicle the Team Universe competition and see if the dreams of one of its youngest participants will come true. Having easily clinched both the Maryland and Delaware state titles the previous year, Haley McNeff is here to make her bid to turn pro. Haley is female bodybuilding's current sweetheart and the troubled division's greatest hope. Female bodybuilding has been drawing fewer fans these days, and the powers that be are hoping to turn back the clock to a golden age when the women's physiques were not so extreme. Haley seems to have that perfect combination of muscle, femininity, and personality, and many in the industry are anticipating her appearance tonight. But as soon as I arrive at her hotel, I see that something is terribly wrong. Haley is alone, and she is sick or panicking, I can't tell which. She is vomiting and dizzy. It looks like she might not make it to the stage. As I help her struggle down the hall, it seems like her months of hard work are flying out the window. And the documentary I've been shooting for the past three years is falling apart. At the end of Raising the Bar 3, it looked as if Dave Pulsanella and Haley McNeff were walking off into a happily ever after sunset. After initially getting to know one another on MySpace and eventually meeting face to face, theirs was a nearly instantaneous and powerful romance that took each of them quite by surprise. At this time, the one thing Haley wanted more than anything was to be a bodybuilder. Dave planned to continue to help young bodybuilders succeed, and Haley certainly would benefit from having him as a boyfriend. Dave's expertise, combined with Haley's youth, genetics, and drive, seemed destined to propel her into the spotlight. But it was not meant to be. The same forces that had brought them together would soon drive them apart and plunge each of them into one of the most painful and difficult episodes in their lives. At the same time, my life was changing as well. Since 2004, I had been documenting my brother's life in bodybuilding and the sacrifices he had made to pursue his passion. The DVDs we had made from his exploits and the YouTube clips we had posted had become somewhat of an underground sensation in the bodybuilding world. And more importantly, they had gotten the attention of Gerard Dente, the president of the supplement company, MHP. A former championship bodybuilder himself, Gerard had a knack for finding talent in the bodybuilding world. He signed Victor Martinez with MHP early in his career, and also discovered Kai Green and signed him for his subsidiary company, MuscleMeds. Gerard contacted me and asked me if I'd like to work with Olympia caliber bodybuilders and make videos for his companies as an independent contractor. Without hesitation, I said yes immediately. Dave and Haley accompanied me to North Jersey for my first shoot with a professional bodybuilder. It was 2008, and Victor Martinez had been the golden boy of bodybuilding. He had placed second at the Olympia the previous year and seemed poised to take the title soon. That is, until a knee injury literally stopped him in his tracks. Now, post-surgery and healing, he was back for his first video shoot. The tricep workout now, right? Like, do, do, do we need any lead in? Here with my good buddy Anthony, you know, Anthony King. We're gonna blast through arms, starting off with triceps, our first exercise. It was really interesting, you know, for me, being in that environment, looking across the room and seeing, you know, Gerard Dente and then Victor Martinez and then my brother, <laughs> you know, in the same room. And I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, the two worlds have always been separate, my brother and then bodybuilding, and he kind of knew what was going on in my world, but not, never really. And here he was in the thick of things, filming, you know, one of the top guys on the planet and in with MHP. And I, I just, in that moment, sat there and thought, wow, look at what these DVDs, these documentaries, look at where they have brought him. Working with Martinez for the first time, I found Victor to be a quiet and soft-spoken fellow. Obviously devastated by his injury, but bravely covering it up and trying to give us what we needed for the video. It was to be the first of many comebacks for this beleaguered athlete. 
This shoot was a milestone for me and the beginning of my association with Gerard and MHP. Unfortunately, the footage I was shooting this day was not documentary footage. It was a promo for a new product. The thing I thought I was best at, capturing real moments and telling true stories, I would not get a chance to do at this level for quite some time. But when I did, it would make bodybuilding history. With RTB3 finished and Dave in retirement, I begin to concentrate on other projects. I became determined to turn what had started out as a hobby into a career, one way or another. I did a strongman contest promo, tried my hand at engagement videos and wedding videos. I did a documentary for a local girls soccer team. I was even hired by Science Central to shoot a video about skin cancer research, among other projects. But none of it had the success or emotional impact of the Raising the Bar series. I began to realize that I had been incredibly fortunate to have had these amazing people at my disposal who were willing to give so much on camera. What I didn't know, and couldn't know at that time, was how my work with Dave and Haley, and later with Victor Martinez and Kai Green, would intertwine with events in my personal life that would change the way I viewed my career, my purpose as a filmmaker, and my life as a whole. I decided to keep filming with Dave. I knew that he and Haley had been talking a lot about preparing her for her first bodybuilding contest. Maybe that could give me a hook to hang a new documentary on. But by the time I had a chance to sit Dave down for an interview, there had been an unforeseen development in the Raising the Bar saga. What's going on right now? We're not together. We have parted ways. We're not together anymore. So I've been dating around and trying to forget and trying to block that out because it was pretty traumatic for me. Um, I didn't want that to go down that way. I wanted to stay with her, but I really couldn't. Was the age a factor, the age difference a factor? I would love to say no, but ultimately what ended up happening, I believe was a product of her age and inexperience with relationships, so yes. Haley may have been young and inexperienced, but there was much more to this story than either of them wanted to admit. Dave and Haley were experimenting with an open relationship, and as can often happen with this kind of arrangement, jealousy reared its ugly head. I got sad, and I was like, what's going to happen when I'm 24 or 5 and I'm living in New York, and what if... You know, I feel like I, you know, I haven't lived enough or I haven't seen enough people or I haven't done things. I'm like, you know, how would we deal with that? So I was just like, you know what, how can we make this the most fun the, with the least angst? And, and how do we get through this in a way that would actually work for both people? And that makes sense with that age gap. And we both agreed that maybe an open relationship would be a good thing. We decided to say that I could, you know, do whatever. And that was really our downfall. I ended up getting feelings for this dude and, and didn't want to. And I resented the fact that he kind of pushed me in that direction, even though I knew it was with good intentions. But I wanted him to be more protective of me. And I think it bothered me that he was even okay with it. Bodybuilders feel like the rules of society do not apply to them. The whole basis of me and Dave's relationship had been, we're not normal and let's celebrate being together and we're bodybuilders and we're super narcissistic and inappropriate is appropriate and what's wrong is right. And it's like, no, it's not. That kind of an arrangement requires a sophistication in relationship and being able to navigate relationships. and. Even then, it's hard. However, with a 19-year-old who's never experienced anything like that, separating sex from feelings, and it, was a very, it was a lot of sophisticated stuff that no one should have expected a 19-year-old to be able to handle. No, we need boundaries. We need some rules. We need guidelines. People have emotions, and you can't just say, I don't want to feel like that, and I'm not going to feel like that. And you can't completely take away all of what's normal and reasonable and have a functional relationship. You just can't do it. 
no yeah. matter how narcissistic or how jacked you are. Back home in Massachusetts, Haley was continuing to train for the Delaware State Competition. She was determined to make it to the stage and win the same show that Dave had won two times. And even though her heart was sick, she decided to channel the pain into her training. We thought we were so strong. And he, you know, he said this to me now. He's like, I just thought because he was like, because we're soulmates and we're so meant for each other, I thought that nothing could destroy us. So I thought we could do anything and we would stay together. So nothing, we're never gonna break up and nothing's ever gonna happen. Okay, well, it did happen. If we're ever on the phone for literally more than like 20, 30 minutes, we try not to stay on the phone for that long and try not to talk th that often for this reason um, because it'll come up. And it's just really evident how he just has pushed it down. You know, and he's literally just hiding it. And he, he does a better job at hiding it than I do. You know, but behind closed doors and when nobody else is listening, he's like, of course I still miss you. Of course I still wish we were together. It kills me. He's like, I can't even think about it because it's so cripplingly painful. have never been able to handle the thought that we're never gonna get back together. I just, I can't handle it. So, you know, in the meantime, we're dating other people and trying to talk to other people. And you know, he, he says, and I say, he's like, there's never gonna be, it's never gonna be us. It's never gonna be the way that it was with anybody else, you know? And he's like, I'm trying to settle for that. And, it's just sad. So the only thing I can hope for is um, that eventually he realizes that we just made mistakes and that he gets over it. But in order for him to get over it, he has to think about it and go through it. And it's just too painful for him. 